Hello and welcome. My name is Lexi Jong and here I like to talk about luxury beauty and today we are looking at the Chanel Holiday Collection Part 2. So I do have a video up already featuring the eyeshadow quad, the locks, and the emblematique lipstick. The rest of my lipsticks have arrived so we've got swatches and comparisons and we have some additional looks using the eyeshadow quad and the locks and have have those like kind of mixed together as well so you can kind of see how they work together. So without further ado, let's start with the lipsticks. So not all of these shades are new. Now these swatch stains are actually from these same shades. So I'm going to make sure I stay in the same, same lane essentially, but I did film like a short or a reel with these swatches so I could get them up sooner. This one here is 199 Rouge Brulant, and that is not a new shade. Next, we have 147 Emblematique, and then we have 176 Independent, or Independent, and this one I believe is also not a new shade. We have 99 Pirate, also not a new shade. And then we have 157 Legendaire, which is on my lips right now. And these are the five shades released in the number five holiday collection. So Rouge Brulant, this one's kind of like an odd color. It's kind of like a salmon coral. Um, so it's warm tones. It's, you know, it, I wouldn't say it looks bad on me, but it's not the best in my opinion. Um, it's an interesting color. I think it's going to look better on people with warmer tones than I have. So if you do have warmer undertones, this might be a nice color for you. Again, it's it's got kind of a salmon-y look, but also kind of like a coral look to it. So I'd say it's a cross between salmon pink and coral. And then we have 147 Emblematique, and I love this one. This is gonna be your cooler tone red, and it's really pretty. You can see you've got those blue tones, blue base to it. And let's just spread that out a little bit. Let me just do this so you guys can see the uh, undertones. You can see how much warmer Rouge Brulant is. And then this one here, Independent, this one is also going to be a warmer tone red. It's neutral, leaning warm. And I think it's really pretty. I really like that one. And then we have 99 Pirate, which is also going to be cooler in tone. But you can see the difference between these two. I would say that Emblematique, um, you know, it's not quite as rich as Pirate. Pirate's a little bit more, I don't know, I feel like Emblematique has a, a touch more raspberry in it, whereas Pirate has a little bit more red. Um, so this is just gonna be like a little bit of a richer red shade. And then Legendaire. This one's gonna be more of your burgundy base, but you can see that it's gonna be cooler in tone, but you've got a lot of depth to it. And again, that's one of my lips. You can see you can really build that up to be a darker, more vampy lipstick. So I'm gonna show you the lip swatches while we talk about these. But first, as for the packaging, these do have the number five logo. So they are limited edition packaging. It's the Rouge Allure formula, and it is a click opening. So you click this and pull this up and then you've got the lipstick. So very beautiful packaging. And as you're looking here at the lip swatches, let's go through a few details on this. So these are made in France. They have an 18 month shelf life and these are limited edition because of the packaging, but some of these shades are permanent shades or shades that have been previously released. These are three and a half grams each and the shades Rouge Brulant are not new, Independent and Pirate. I believe all three of those are repeat shades. And yeah, so double check your collection before you purchase any of these in case you already have them. We are gonna go through some swatch comparisons of some other Chanel shades and some like iconic reds that I have in my collection to look at these. The formula for the Rouge Allure lipstick is a really nice satin formula. It's not one that's super balmy, so you don't really have to worry so much about feathering and lines. Uh, th there, there will be some, so I do recommend using a lip liner, but you know, sometimes when you use like a deep satin 
lipstick, it's it kind of can get a little messy. These really don't do that too badly. I really think Chanel ha does an excellent job with their red lipsticks. And they are one of the only formulas that I will purchase a red in a satin formula because they do stay put fairly well. And I just think that they, Chanel really nails these reds and these undertones and so forth. So they're definitely really, really beautiful. So these lipsticks retail for 45 US dollars. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some comparisons. We have from Holiday a couple of years ago, this is 847 in the same formula, Rouge Allure. This is Rouge Majeste, and this is gonna be a deeper um, burgundy shade, but you can see it's gonna be a little bit lighter than Legendaire, and it's a little more, a little bit more pink, a little bit less burgundy. This one here from the same collection is 817 Rouge Splendide. And you can see that this is really gonna be a brighter pink based coral compared to Rouge Brulant. This is 127 from last year's holiday, Rouge Dor, And we're gonna put this one right over here because it does have a little bit of similarity here to Emblematique and Pirate. It's kind of in between. It's not quite as warm as Pirate, but not quite as cool as Emblematique. And this one has a little bit of gold sparkle in it. You can see in the bullet there. This one is from last year's collection. Again, we've got the gold sparkle. This is 117 or Cuivre. And you can see how different that is from Legendaire. It's gonna be lighter, a little bit warmer. And again, it's just not gonna be quite as, um, you know, it, it's not so burgundy or not quite so pinkish either. 137, Porpredor from the same collection. You can see that this one has a lot more purple in it comparatively, um, but they do have a pretty similar depth of color. The difference is Legendaire is gonna be more burgundy versus more plum purple. Here's 857, Rouge Noble. And this is gonna be a really deep shade. Um, going to be deeper than anything offered this year's holiday collection. I think it is a stunning shade, but it's also going to have a lot more purple in it. You can see the purple base here uh, compared to uh, Legendaire here. This is going to be one of the Rouge Allure Velvets. This one came out during the Lion Collection. This is 257 Rouge Triomphal. And let's put that one down here. So it is a different finish. This one is going to be most similar to 99 Pirate. Oh, no, sorry, 176 Independent. So these two are the most similar. This one here, um, Triumphal, is going to be just a little bit more pigmented. And it's also not quite as, like, there's a little bit more warmth to Independent. For comparison, this one here is 58 Rouge V from that same line. This one's really not gonna go with any of them, but I did wanna show you just how much warmer the lipsticks from the Lion Collection were compared to these. And again, this one is a velvet. This is a Rouge Allure Velvet Extreme in 134, a Closion. And we're gonna put this one right here by Rouge Brulant because this is my closest lipstick to it. So you can see that they do have some similarity. This is a little bit deeper and there's a little bit more pink in it uh, than Rouge Brulant. It's kind of like a slightly deeper matte version of Rouge Brulant though. I feel like they are fairly similar in shade. And then this is going to be number 136 P1 Noir. Again, another Velvet Extreme. It's not really gonna quite go with any of these though. This is gonna be a warmer red. Um, you know, I think your closest is 176 Independent, but this is more like strawberry red, whereas this is more uh, like brick tones. So I think they're just, they're not gonna quite go together. Now this is a Givenchy Le Rouge Deep Velvet in 38, Granat Fumé. We're gonna put this one right here so you can kind of see how that goes. It's gonna be deeper, uh, definitely more plum berry as well. And another one of the Givenchy Le Rouge Deep Velvets, this is 36 and this is called Lanterdi. 
this one here, um, you know, it's kind of a little bit more tomato red than any of these here. It's a little bit more neutral than in the pendant. Um, kind of though in between that and pirate. So it's kind of like right in between these two in color. You can see even then though, it's still going to be a little bit more tomato-y than the other two. And then two from Lisa Eldridge. I wanted to compare this one here is Velvet Jazz. So we're going to put this right here in between Legendaire. So Legendaire is here on the bottom. And this one here is Pirate. Okay, so you can see that it's going to be deeper. It does have similar tones to Legendaire, but it's a lot more, it's a lot deeper and has um, like more of like a deeper burgundy hue to it. And then, oh, broke. <laughs> and then we have Velvet Ribbon. Let's put that one right here, right by Emblematique. And I think that's going to be closest to Emblematique. You can see that they are pretty similar. Again, the finish is going to be very different, which gives it a different look on the face, but they do both have kind of that pink blue base tone to it. The Velvet Ribbon does have a little bit more pink to it than um, Emblematique, but they're very close. So these are going to be my lipstick comparisons. Now, while we're swatching, let's go ahead and take a look at the eyeshadow quad one more time. And I am loving this quad. I have never, ever bought a backup eyeshadow palette before, but I did. I just bought a second one of these because I loved it so much. Uh, you know, you've got this sparkly gold topper. It really gives you kind of this like gold starlight look. It's gorgeous. There's not really a lot of pigment to it, like as a base. It's really more of a topper. And then you have this silvery white shade. And again, you can build that up so you get it more opaque or you can pat it on lightly and have more of a shimmer effect. And then you have this white gold, which I think is just stunning. And that's the major color on my eyes today. I absolutely love this. It's fantastic. And then we have a matte black. So I think this quad in particular is fantastic to use alone or to mix in with other things. You know, it's a really a great way to amp up some of the neutrals you might already have in your collection or even just like solid colors, you know, something vibrant and add like one of these toppers or I love adding this silver white shade more towards the inner corner and kind of fading that out. I just think it's beautiful. Now I also picked up the Rouge Allure Luxe and I have really been enjoying these. So this one here is Or Antique, and you can see it's gonna be fairly pigmented uh, upon application. It dries quickly, it doesn't budge. This is fantastic as an eyeliner or an eyeshadow, you know, however you wanna use it. And then we also have Noir, Or Noir. I think that, yep, Or Noir, 17. And this one though is actually going to be more sheer so when you put that on um it's a little bit harder to get like a nice solid even application with this one you kind of want to go in with light layers and let it dry if you want to get a full pigmented black otherwise you can use this more as like a sheer charcoal with some sparkle and so forth and you can see the sparkle in here it's really beautiful they both have a lot of sparkle there's like silver and gold sparkle embedded throughout. And once these dry, they really stay put. Now, as for comparisons, this one here is the eyeshadow from, was this last year? I think it was last year, 925 or Antique in the Ombre Premiere. This is same shade. So that's or Antique. You can see that this one is gonna be a little bit more gold, not quite as bronze as the lock. And then let's look at the eye pencil in the same shade. So the Stilo Yo Waterproof Eye Pencil, this came out in 48 or antique just this summer. Let's put that right here. You can see it's kind of a cross in between these two shades, but it's definitely more of that yellow bright gold compared to the lock. And I really like them. Another one to compare, this is 56 Grander. This is from the holiday collection a couple years ago. So this is another Ombre Premiere. And let's put that one right here. You can see that this actually looks closer to the Orantique Lock 
than the Or Antique eyeshadow. I think these are really close. All right, so I hope all of these swatches have been helpful. If you have any additional comparison requests or anything, please be sure to let me know down below in the comments. I'm gonna go ahead and share the additional eye looks with you, and then I'll see you here in a minute. All right, so we are going to go in with the Lock and Or Ombre. And while that's wet, I'm just gonna buff out the crease a little. So I have the Isom V33 brush. And just gonna smooth that out a little. All right, I'm taking the Ruffer 02 and I'm gonna go into the shade down here at the bottom. And the lock is pretty much dry. I'm just gonna kind of tap this on top. And I wipe the brush off and there's no additional shadow. I'm just kind of blending that over a little. So now I have more of this like gold ombre effect. The powder shadows go on top of the lock very, very well. Taking that crease brush that I used before and just kind of buffing the crease a little. I'm taking the Ruffer 26. I'm going to go into the white shade here. And I'm just going to dab a little bit of this right here in the inner corner. For the lower lash line, I'm going to take a little bit of this gold. It's super sparkly, so I don't need much. I just want a little shimmer down here. You know, a lot of people probably wouldn't want glitter down here, but I'm in a glittery mood today. Now, if you don't really want um, this like loose glitter down here, a great option would be just using the or Ombre um, there. Just, you know, I would put a little bit on my hand and use a liner brush and then smudge it out a little bit if you want it smudgier. But I love those locks for liners. So that's another great option. For liner here, I think I'm going to go with something brown today. Taking the Chanel Cielo Yoa and Espresso. I'm just going to put this along the lash line. All right, and I'm just taking the rougher brush, just smudging that just a touch. All right, so this is the eye look up close. I'm gonna finish my makeup. I'll show you from a distance. So this is the final look from a distance. I have to say, I'm still absolutely loving this collection. On my lips, I have one of the Chanel Rouge Coco Blooms in 118 Radiant. I have the Clay de Peau Cream Blush in number four, Perfect Peach on, and the Chanel Duo de Camellia Highlighter, which I just love that. And uh, the foundation is Chanel Ultra Latent and BT01. Thank you. Okay, so I have on the Viseart eye primer. I'm gonna go into Claire Obscure and I'm gonna go into this shade here. This is the Sonia G Crease Pro. I'm just gonna use this for a little bit in the crease. Next, I'm taking the Crease Pro into the black and I'm gonna dab this on the outer corner. Next, I'm going to go into the white gold shade, and this is the Chikahoto KZ06. I think that brush was a little bit too soft, so I'm gonna go over that again with the Worker Pro from Sonia G. All 
I'm just going to take some on the finger for this outer half here. I just want to touch a gold sparkle all over. So back with the KZ6 and the gold topper. For the lower lash line, going back into the shade from Claire Obscure with the Ruffer 26. And just a touch of this one here, which is like, um, it's actually a pale gold for the inner corner. Going with the Stilo Yo in Ver Emerald, which is number 46 for the upper lash line. And this is it up close. I'll finish my makeup and see you in a second. And this is the final look from a distance. So I did add the Chanel Stilo Ya or Antique eyeliner on the waterline, sort of, just a tiny bit. And I have on the Chanel Ultra Latent Foundation in BD01, the Cure Weiss Cream Blush in Blossoming, the Givenchy Holiday Highlighter, and the lips are the um suku the lip fog in 103 and that's it all right so i have the vizier eye primer on we're going to start with the noir and let's put this on all over the lid so if i swipe this on you can see it's like a little bit more sheer so i want to build it up so it doesn't it's more opaque and you don't see because it can be a little you know patchy if you have part of it sheer and part of it not so we're gonna do a thin layer and let it dry and let me get a crease brush to kind of clean that up a bit so this is so energy crease too Okay, time for a second layer here. All right, so I'm just gonna let this sit for a few seconds so it can dry. All right, so I'm taking the Ruffer 26 brush and let's go into the white gold here. And we're going to put this in the corners and just gonna work this on top here a little bit. So adding a little bit to this inner third. You can see how much more gold that looks. Okay, gonna add a little bit of the silvery white shade just right adjacent to that up to the midpoint. I don't know, I think I still like the black just kind of on its own, but I do want to top this with the gold topper and see how much more sparkly we can get. So going in with the KZ6 into the gold. Let's Put this all over here. You can see that really takes away the glossy look from the lock. So I don't have anything else on this brush. I'm just going into this, kind of buffing it a little bit. There's not really that much movement, but just wanna clean up just a touch. For the lower lash line, I'm gonna take the Noir Lash Tint and the Sonia G Flat Definer. So I'm just gonna get some product on here and just kind of edge it a little bit. You 
I'm taking the rougher 26 and this is pretty much set already, but I'm just gonna see if I can soften it at all. So yeah, definitely a very different look today, but I want to try something different. And actually this is Halloween today. So, you know, I feel like it's kind of appropriate. All right, and this is the final look from a distance. So it's definitely more of a deeper vibe, but you know, I, I like it. <laughs> On the lips, I have the Givenchy. These are the Night Noir lipsticks. So I have a mix of Night in Blue. These are like color changing. So, you know, there's a hint of blue, but um, it's not completely blue. And then night and gray. So I have these on my lips. The uh, cheeks are the Armani Neo Nude Melting um, Color Balm Cheeks and Eyes Blush Cream. What a long name. <laughs> In shade 50. And I have on the Chanel Ultra Latent Foundation and Concealer. And that's it. All right, we are going to go in with something simple today. We're just gonna go into this white gold and this is the Kyrado Large Eyeshadow Brush. I have the Vizier Eye Primer on. Just gonna put this all over. Going for a very light look today and we're gonna add a little bit of color eyeliner. I just love this color. This shade is just beautiful. I'm going to take the Refer 03 into the silver white shade and just add a little bit of this for the inner corner here. And I'm going to go back in with the Kyrado into the gold topper and just going to press a little bit of this all over just to add a little bit more sparkle. That so you can see the difference between these two eyes and used very little bit of the sparkle. So to keep this a little bit like softer and lighter, I would normally probably just take the black eyeshadow with the pencil brush and just smudge it in dry just along the lash line and keep it very like kind of soft. But I wanna go in with something a little bit more colorful today. I'm gonna to take the Chanel Liquid Liner in 526. This is the blue shade. I mean, this is like stunning. So I'm just wiping a little bit of this off the applicator and I'm not gonna go crazy with this. All right, and then I want a little blue on the lower lash line. So I'm taking the Viseart, this is the Bijouette palette. I'm just going to get a little bit of this on the Refer 03 and very softly put this, oh, got a little too much there. Just wiped off a little bit on the brush. All right, so I don't want that. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and see if we can, let's get a different brush. I'm taking the Refer 28 into, let's go into the white gold shade and smudge this on top here. You know, the under eye thing, it's just bad. I'm just gonna remove it. All right, so we're just gonna leave it at that. I removed it, you know, there's still a little trace left because, you know, I had to be careful. But uh, then I tapped on a little bit of the Givenchy Prisma Libre Powder in number 11, Sparkling Lilac. Just took a little bit of the darker purple shade and put a little bit of that underneath. And I'm gonna add some mascara and I'll see you in a second. All right, and here is the final look from a distance. And yeah, I like it, nice and simple. I hope those were helpful. As you can see, I think that these shadows are very, very versatile. If you're considering something from this collection, I would definitely say the standouts would be the eyeshadow quad. I'm really loving the Ore Antique Lock. And, um, you know, I love all five of the lipsticks. Well, particularly the four reds, um, more so than the Rouge Brulot. I don't really love that one. Um, but I think, you know, picking up a lipstick and the quad would be fantastic or a lipstick quad and a lock. I really like both of the locks, but if I had to choose one, I would pick the Ore Antique because I do think it's a little bit easier to use and it just goes so beautifully with this palette. 
Overall though, I think this whole collection is a win. I have no regrets for picking up all of these items and I'm very happy with them. So I hope this was helpful. And if you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you haven't already and share this with your friends. I'll see you very soon. So have a great day and stay safe and healthy.